welcome to my channel today i'll be discussing the details about uh, sodium hydroxide versus hcl titration class 11th cbsc board practical requirement and i'll be discussing every detail about this experiment in this video that is the procedure the precautions uh, everything about the apparatus and how to record this in your record copies so watch till the end let us proceed so i'm going to give you details first about what kind of experiment is this so we are going to start the discussion of quantitative analysis there are two, two kinds of analysis when it comes to chemistry uh, quantitative analysis and qualitative analysis these two analysis are part of your class 11th syllabus qualitative analysis means we just need to know uh, what is present in a particular compound let us say i give you a salt and i ask you to identify what are the components of this salt that will be called as quantitative analysis and uh, qualitative analysis now quantitative analysis is volumetric analysis where we will be given an unknown solution say uh, here you have a sodium hydroxide solution which is unknown unknown means we do not know its molarity we do not know its concentration this is hcl solution this is 1 by 10 or 0.1 molar this is a known solution or a standard solution a standard solution is the one whose concentration is known the apparatus we are going to use is this one this this is a pipette this is a pipette so this is a burette we are going to use an indicator that is phenolphthalein an indicator is basically a weak organic acid or a weak organic base which can change its color uh, with a sharp change in color with change in pH that is as the solution changes from acidic to basic or basic to acidic it sharply changes its pH so such substances are called indicators now the aim of today's experiment that we are going to discuss is to measure concentration that is molarity and strength of an unknown solution the aim of our particular experiment that we are going to do today will be to determine concentration of this unknown solution, sodium hydroxide solution, provided M by 10 HCl solution. I will be showing how to write this, the details of the experiment, the theory part I will be sharing in this video. Uh, but first we are going to go through the experimental part, right. So first let me introduce you to the apparatus used. Pipette. This is a pipette and this pipette as you can see has a graduation at this part. Here is a graduation. You can see a graduation and this is the bulb of the pipette. On the bulb is written the volume. If you can see the volume of this pipette is 10 ml. This is written on the bulb on this bulb 10 ml and till this means that till this way this mark if we fill liquid in this pipette it will be total 10 ml you can see this end is a pointed end and before you start working on a pipette you must check this end is not broken uh, neither is this top broken or chipped in any way right this should not be broken now uh, with the pipette i am going to suck in 10 ml of sodium hydroxide solution this is sodium hydroxide solution i'll just stir it a bit and i'll be sucking in uh, 10 ml of sodium hydroxide solution through this clear uh, this is standard hcl solution standard hcl solution means this is a solution whose concentration we know this is 0.1 molar this is called as this is a conical flask also called as a titration flask we're going to use do titration using this and here is the burette this is a burette which if you see carefully has graduations this burette is marked 50 here you can see the mark 50 and here on this end is marked 0 this is the 0 mark right this is 0 and this end is 50 and you can see this is a complete look of a burette 
this is a burette this is marked from zero at the top this is a zero mark even if this is not clear to you just understand this mark is zero and it starts one two three onwards till it ends at 50 this way this is a mark of 50 right and now uh, what are we supposed to do we are supposed to rinse this pipette rinsing of the pipette means uh, after washing the entire apparatus with water with soap uh, to clean it now before we start working on this we are going to rinse the pipette with the solution that is to be poured in it rinsing basically means we just want the inner walls of this to be coated with the solution which is to be poured inside clear and if we do not rinse if we simply wash it with water and then use what will happen when you take a particular concentration of sodium hydroxide into this pipette since already a few drops of water will be present in the pipette they would change the concentration of this solution similarly when i pour this hcl into a burette which has been washed and is not already rinsed with the solution of hcl what will happen the concentration of hcl that we pour the concentration will change after pouring by because there are some droplets of water already inside the burette so to avoid that what we have to do we have to rinse this burette with hcl solution and this pipette with sodium hydroxide solution and the titration flask is just to be washed with ordinary water after every reading we'll be washing the titration flask with water clear so let us start taking our first reading and then we'll see how to do the calculation stir the sodium hydroxide solution and i will be sucking 10 ml solution into this you have to be careful not to suck it into your mouth so this is the 10 ml mark i will release the pressure on this finger very softly so that the liquid reaches the mark just see when the liquid reaches this mark I have sucked in 10 ml of the solution and now I will see that the lower meniscus of the solution reaches, touches the mark given here. The lower meniscus touches the mark. So now I will be transferring this liquid into this titration flask. Now as I transfer it into the titration flask, make sure you do not blow the last drop. You do not blow the last drop out. Just touch it once or twice at the bottom of the container. Now I am going to discard this. Let us rinse the pipette. I am going to rinse the pipette. First, sucking in small amount of the liquid. Just swirling it in like this so that it coats all the walls of this. And now I am going to discard this into the sink. Please do not discard this liquid back into the sodium hydroxide container okay this is rinsing that means the inner walls of this pipette have been coated with sodium hydroxide solution so now i will be i've sucked in 10 ml more solution when it reaches the lower meniscus reaches the mark i will transfer this liquid into this this is 10 ml transferred through the pipette. The lower meniscus should match the graduation here. Let this in and you can see a few drops at the bottom. Now you are not to blow these drops out. You will simply touch it once or twice like this at the bottom of the container. Okay. Now to this I am going to add 1 or 2 drops of phenolphthalein. Now adding phenolphthalein, the solution turns pink. Sodium hydroxide is an alkali. Alkalis show pink color with phenolphthalein. So now I am going to do the titration with the HCl solution. So before that we are going to pour HCl into this burette. 
make sure this end is closed i pour small amount of xcl into this remove the funnel and just swirl it and discard it into the sink this is rinsing and small amount of the liquid i'm going to discard for, from this end so that the entire liquid is rinsed with entire burette is rinsed with hcl solution and now we will refill this burette with hcl it is not essential to fill it till zero mark you can fill it till any mark to take your reading and i'll be taking a rectangular piece of paper fold it once like this fold it again tear it off from here and this is the anti parallax cup this is going to help us to take the reading this prevents parallax error children before you take the final reading you have to check there is no bubble inside no air bubble so like we have air bubbles here and plus there should be liquid in the nozzle it's also so i want to let some liquid out to remove the air bubble you can tap it once or twice like this yeah so the air bubble is removed the nozzle is completely full and now i take the initial reading the initial reading here yeah how do we take the initial reading in a burette if i just magnify and show you a burette reading is like this say this is 25 and this is 25.1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and this is 26 this is how we have the burette readings i've shown it magnified to you okay so let us say the liquid shows this reading this this means the lower meniscus is coming along this is it's touching this point so this point i'll read this as 25.3 this is 25 25.1 25.2 and 25.3 so the reading will be 25.3 now we will look for the final reading so i'm going to now let this liquid pass by opening this nozzle drop by drop i will let the liquid in till this liquid turns colorless now why will this liquid turn colorless because we are dropping hcl into sodium hydroxide right now we have excess of sodium hydroxide the solution is pink because phenolphthalein shows pink color with alkalis right phenolphthalein shows pink color with alkalis as we pass hcl hcl reacts with sodium hydroxide tending to make this neutral so when hcl moles equal to the moles of sodium hydroxide are added there is complete neutralization and after that one more drop of hcl is going to make the solution acidic and phenolphthalein will become colorless so this solution has become colorless and i'm going to take the final reading now the final reading here uh, reads 30.3 okay so your initial reading was 25.3 judged from the lower meniscus of the liquid so this is 25 to 26 i have magnified the burette reading here and this is the initial reading in the burette say 25.3 is the initial reading here uh, understand this mark was 0 this was 50 in a burette that means when you have this much liquid 25.3 and you have liquid in the burette the volume of the liquid inside the burette is not 25.3 ml so you will not write ml with the initial reading this is an extremely important point to be noted you will not write ml with your initial reading because this is not the volume used you will draw out some liquid out of this container till the new reading becomes 30.3 so volume of the liquid drawn out is going to be 5 ml the difference between the final and the initial reading will give us the volume that has been used to bring about this titration 5 ml of hcl has been used to neutralize this given uh, sodium hydroxide solution 
this observations are to be recorded like this observations to be recorded uh, as solution in pipette sodium hydroxide solution in burette hcl volume of pipette 10 ml and this is how you make the observation table four columns first serial number second initial reading then final reading then volume used you have to write three readings initial is 0 Final is five. Your initial reading can be anything. If the uh, liquid in the burette is less, you can add more after a, a particular reading, right? So uh, only thing important is you note the initial reading and then the final reading. Take the difference that gives you the volume used. And ml is to be written only with the final reading, not with the initial and the final. Only with the volume used. ml is to be written only with the volume used neither with final reading nor with initial reading very important because as i explained to you initial and final are simply marks readings they are not the volumes okay only the liquid that is drawn out is volume in ml now second important point is you will always write your readings to two decimal places you will always take down readings to two decimal places like zero is to be written as 0.00 5.00 this is 30.30 and so on finally we will write below this table mean of three concordant readings concordant readings are the ones which differ by 0.05 now concordant readings are the readings which differ by 0.05 so that means your three different readings that you take should have should differ only by a maximum of 0.05 that's the ideal condition Okay, all the three readings should either be identical or differ by 0.05. Now, how do we do the calculation? Now, the equation that we've used is sodium hydroxide plus HCl to give sodium chloride plus water. One mole of sodium hydroxide plus one mole of HCl to give NaCl and water. There are two possible equations that you can use. The molarity equations. One is you can go by N1 M1 V1 is equal to N2 M2 V2, where N1 is going to be the N factor of acid, that is the basicity of acid. And since the acid is HCl, its N factor, that is basicity, will be one. One ionizable H. Molarity of the acid that we've taken is one by ten. Volume of HCl is our burette reading. Our burette reading came out to be five. N2 is the acidity of the base, which is again one because NaOH has one OH. Molarity of NaOH is what we need to calculate, and volume of NaOH is the pipette reading that is 10 ml because we took our reading using 10 ml volume. So we are going to solve this. So from molarity, we are going to calculate strength. Strength is molarity into molecular weight, so 0.05 into 40. That is 2 gram per liter will be our answer. Do not forget to write units with all that you calculate. Now another way to calculate is uh, using this formula M1 V1 upon N1 is equal to M2 V2 upon N2. When you are using this formula, this N1 is the stoichiometric coefficient of the acid in the balanced chemical equation. and this is stoichiometric coefficient of the base in the balanced chemical equation and the stoichiometric coefficient you know in this reaction is 1 and 1 1 for both so what are we going to do again do the same calculations molarity was uh, 1 by 10 molar volume of acid is the burette reading and n1 is 1 because number of moles of hcl in the equation is 1 molarity of base is unknown this is what we need to calculate volume of the base is the pipette volume that is 10 ml and the n number of moles of sodium hydroxide in the balanced equation is 1 so solve it and you get the same answer 0.05 molar uh, strength 2 g per liter three concordant readings to be taken for your experiment and then mean of those concordant readings to be checked now i am going to discuss with you the precautions uh, while using a pipette the precautions while using a pipette are first uh, must rinse it with the solution that you have to use for it then do not hold the pipette from the bulb do not hold the pipette from the bulb because if you hold the pipette from the bulb for long this is thin glass sensitive glass there can be a mild expansion in volume and it might give you an error in reading and children volumetric analysis please remember is a very sensitive experiment uh, every step 
where you are careless will include a large error in the uh, calculations so always take the reading the graduation must be read at the eye level that is another important point do not blow out liquid this liquid you can see in the pipette do not blow this out into the titration flask simply tap it twice or thrice at the bottom of the uh, titration flask now while you are adding solution with a burette with a funnel the points that you have to keep in mind is hold the funnel up like this so that you allow enough space for air to pass through otherwise the liquid is going to overflow out and there will be a mess on your seat so as you are pouring the liquid out just hold it a little up this way for air to pass through then uh, readings always to be taken at eye level you must keep your reading at eye level you can uh, move your burret up and down to bring the reading at your eye level before taking the reading to prevent parallax error this is the anti parallax card that you have to use then you have to make sure there is no air bubble in the nozzle or in the burret and the nozzle is also full before you start taking your reading and burette and pipette are rinsed with their respective solutions that is burette with hcl and pipette with sodium hydroxide before you start the experiment the titration flask is not to be rinsed after every reading i am going to simply discard the solution wash it with water nicely and this is ready for the next reading and i will do the reading with this now why do we rinse the burette and pipette and not the titration flask i have already made a video on this so i'll be putting the link down now i'm sharing with you uh, this how to write down so just see carefully you will be writing down the aim this is left hand side of your copy write down aim apparatus then molecular equation then indicator then end point then observations make the observation table and these readings should be to two decimal places the observations should be noted to des two decimal places and you will take the mean and mean has to be rounded off to one decimal place and quoted like this plus minus 0.1 ml right and then on the next page you will show the calculations calculations we are using the molarity equation substitute all the values and then finally quote the result quote the result molarity of sodium hydroxide is equal to whatever you get and strength is equal to whatever you get the right hand page is to be written like this to determine molarity and strength then the principle you may leave the principle it depends upon what instructions you get from school then procedure procedure to be written clearly but in brief procedure means what you've done what you've performed and then general calculations children general calculations mean we are simply going to assume the volume of hcl used to be xml or vml this is the burette reading we will assume this to be vml so molarity of sodium hydroxide to be calculated substitute all the values just the buric reading is kept as x or v calculate your answer in terms of x or v calculate strength in terms of x or v right and then using this just put the buric reading here the value of x and calculate the final answer on this page okay so this is general calculation and that side was proper calculation with the reading and then finally you have to use the precautions three to four important precautions and please remember uh, writing a precaution as uh, do the experiment carefully note down the readings carefully uh, just simply saying do everything carefully that is not considered as a precaution please remember that is just common sense okay yeah so go ahead and be prepared for performing the experiment